Happy birthday, Stadia! It's been one year, and you've gotten so much better and stable and... What? How is this still happening? Stadia? Stadia? I can't believe we're gonna do this, but today we're making a sequel video. Not for a new product, no, but for the exact same service we've already covered. We've never done this on the Worst Ever series for anything we've ever looked at, but Stadia deserves it. For those of you who missed our last video on the topic, in a nutshell, Stadia is a video game streaming platform from Google that works over the internet. Google's powerful servers run the game and stream the video feed to your TV, laptop, or phone. And Stadia makes it easy to play your favorite games on any screen in your life. Some of you may be wondering why I bothered to spend time explaining what Stadia is. Well, according to Stadia themselves, you still don't know what they are. If you want to know what Stadia is, you found the right video. Simply put, Stadia is a gaming service by Google. That adds simple, straightforward, and easy to understand. It's too bad that it came out a year after the damn thing launched. It's like putting up signs today to advertise the garage sale you had last weekend. If you'd advertised sooner, you probably would have sold that box of Skylanders, Phil. But Stadia has always been a bit of a disaster. Their launch last year was a waking nightmare. Delayed features, pre-orders didn't ship on time. When gamers did get their controller, they still couldn't access the service. And when they did access it, the game experience was, at best, a mixed bag. We covered the whole messy affair in a video that we branded the worst console launch ever. And you know what, folks? they still proudly hold that title. Wherever you are, Stadia lets you play the latest games. A disclaimer before we go any further, I don't hate cloud gaming. I think cloud gaming could become a powerful force in the future. But for now, we got problems. The biggest one is that Stadia simply isn't fun to play. And for a video game service, that's a pretty big problem. You can't even get past the Stadia store without it brutally wasting your time. They list all the special editions and bundles of one one game on individual lines, cluttering the list of games and doubling or tripling the time it takes for you to scroll to what you want. Why don't I just search for what I want and stop complaining, you ask? Because Stadia still doesn't have a search function. That's right, Stadia by Google, the famed internet search company where I can look up recipes for anchovy and pickle banana bread if I wanted to, doesn't have a search function for their video game streaming service. How? Maybe they're trying to secretly prevent you from buying games, the same way they might secretly be trying to prevent you from playing them. I've had so many issues just connecting the freaking Stadia controller. I don't know what is happening here, but every so often the simple act of connecting the physical Stadia controller to their service is buggy or simply doesn't want to cooperate. But the fun thing is, even after I got all that set up, I still had games made unplayable by frame drops and input lag. Wherever you are, Stadia lets you play the latest games. Wherever I am, well, I'm at home with a super stable fiber internet connection and Stadia don't let me play. We're able to deliver this experience to users with a connection speed of around 35 megabits per second. I had Hitman a notoriously stable game that I've personally played for over 80 hours on competing platforms just crash on me for no reason. Within the first 50 minutes of play on Stadia, I had the game actually crash. And no, no, that's not me pausing the game. That's what a Stadia game crash looks like. The game just freezes, forcing you to close Stadia and lose your spot in the game world. I've tried to play multiplayer games like Super Bomberman R Online and had to wait forever for enough players to join so we could simply start a game. And even when the game started, I'm pretty sure a lot of those players were just bots, or maybe they were real Stadia players and they don't know how to play Bomberman all that well, I don't know. But what I do know is that this waiting screen here was having connection issues. The waiting screen was having connection issues. Listen to how awful and broken this music is. That's the power of the cloud right there. No one player's experience is the same as the next. It's heavily dependent on your internet connection, but mine is pretty solid. So I have no idea just how good it's gotta be to work properly. This has been a big problem ever since Stadia's launch. 
Clip. Stadia depends on your internet connection being consistent and solid and fast enough to work all the time. There are only a privileged few who can claim such stability, and even with all the internet connections I have access to, that's still not a reality for me. Connection strength and speed are an obstacle that Stadia has no solution for. Even if they personally upgrade every city on the planet to fiber internet, even if Mr. Google himself comes to your front door and says, Hey there, campers! My name is Mr. Google! I will give you the fastest, freest internet for free because I am Mr. Google and that's who I am. Mr. Google giving you internet for free because that's what I do. There is a chance it still won't work. So all the millions of people on the planet who live with iffy internet have to make the same realization about Stadia that I made about skinny jeans in high school. It probably doesn't work for you. Instead of a console or a PC, you're using Google's data center as the platform. We handle the intense gameplay processing and graphics, so there's no console required to play your favorite games. That's what Stadia is all about, the games. Heck, I'm sold. Who doesn't want to play games right now at their fingertips instantly? If Stadia had done its job right, then gamers should be jumping to streaming and completely avoiding those fancy new PS5s and Xboxes. Huh, looks like people are still more than willing to buy those expensive video game consoles. Who knew? And you won't have to buy any expensive hardware to play the latest and greatest games. Just because you don't need to buy the hardware doesn't mean you don't still want to. But what would compel us to still spend hundreds of dollars on a box instead of using Stadia seemingly for free? And start playing for free. Well, the answer is the most important element of any game platform, the games. Isn't that right, Phil? That's what Stadia is all about, the games. See, even Phil agrees with me. The consoles have games we want to play. We're not buying them for nothing. One year in, Stadia is struggling to release exclusive content and padding out their library with previously released games going as far back as 2016. Now look, I don't know if it's because of bad management on Stadia's end or if it's a problem on their development side, but Stadia has failed hard on providing the one thing people want from a game platform. A strong library of games! It's like if a fast food restaurant advertised that they had the fastest customer service and the cleanest tables. But when you go to the restaurant, they've got nothing you want to eat. And what they do have, other restaurants have been serving for years already. You have to give people variety. You need to give people something new and unique. This is where first party exclusives come in, the signature menu item of video game consoles. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft all have platform exclusive titles that keep fans coming back generation after generation. What are Stadia's exclusives though? Well, they still have guilt and uh, few timed exclusives, and I think Splash Damage is working with them on an exclusive game, but games like Get Packed and Krata aren't exactly Legend of Zelda and Spider-Man, and all of Stadia's exclusives are third-party developed. Stadia hasn't created any in-house developed titles themselves. Instead, they ended up relying on third-party games like Doom and Elder Scrolls Online. You know, games that Microsoft just recently purchased? So let's see how long those games last on Stadia. Spoiler, not very long. With Stadia, your things, yes, the things you already own, are now reborn as unstoppable gaming machines. Ready to play the biggest triple A face melters in all their glory. Yes. Another laughable piece of Stadia marketing is it has equal or even better graphics than competing platforms. They've been saying some version of this ever since GDC 2019. 10.7 teraflops is more powerful than the top two consoles of the previous generation combined. They want us to believe that Stadia is a good alternative for playing demanding, graphically intense games without a console or PC. And it's really not. Those things you already own can deliver Stadia's high quality gaming experience. Let's do the science, comparing the effects of Google Stadia versus Nintendo Switch. If Stadia's marketing is accurate, then there should be no compromises made between the two platforms. We'll play Doom 2016, a game that, although might not be on Stadia for much longer, does indeed run on Stadia at high quality graphics settings with 60 frames per second. This exact game is also available on Nintendo Switch. On Switch, Doom is definitely running at a much lower resolution, and at about half the 
frame rate than Stadia. So Stadia has a massive advantage right away. But with Switch, there is no delay in the controls and no issues regardless of where I run this because I don't need to be online to make it work. Switch is consistently consistent. If you want the Doom, you get the Doom. But on Stadia, you're on Stadia. Yes, I'm sure Stadia's data center is running the game the best it can, but I wouldn't know. In my experience, I got tons of frame drops and delayed inputs simply because my connection was always different wherever I was. It seemed to work more at home than on the go, but even with the best connection I could buy, it still suffers from slightly slower inputs, and with a game like Doom, that's no fun. And if you're brave enough to try and play it on a phone, good luck. Those things you already own can deliver Stadia's high quality gaming experience. In my opinion, streaming this game to a phone makes it unplayable. The input lag is awful, and depending on your connection, the sound and visuals will constantly stutter. Also, it's way less convenient than playing on Switch. To play Doom and most other games on Stadia properly, you would need to carry around a full gamepad. I know Stadia on phones has touch controls now, but come on, who plays Doom 2016 with a touch screen? This is a heavily skill-based twitchy first-person shooter, requiring crazy amounts of inputs. I don't want to feel like I'm playing a heated match of finger twister on my phone. It's a mess. So far, it seems like the drastically underpowered portable console is winning. So let's do the experiment again with a much less power hungry game, like Doom 64, keep it in the Doom family. Where you think this would give Stadia an advantage, it actually works out worse for the streaming platform. The visual quality between Switch and Stadia are now basically identical, but Stadia still suffers from all of the same problems. You get bogged down with the lag and frame drops that simply aren't an issue on Switch. And on top of everything, you're basically wasting your data streaming the game on Stadia. Get this, depending on what settings you're using, streaming this game for one hour can take from 4.5 to 20 gigs of data. You know how much data it takes to download the game to a Switch? 161 megabytes. That's 3.5% of what you need on Stadia in the first hour alone. That's freaking crazy. And by the way, current consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S are now hitting 120 frames per second. That's twice the frame rate of what Stadia is currently pushing. So now, console games feel even quicker and more responsive than they did a year ago. Stadia is not constrained by the limitation of traditional console systems. Stadia has failed at proving it has any real value compared to its console overlords. It feels like it's what you'd use when you literally have no other choice. It's the gas station hot dog of video games. Yeah, you might be hungry, but you'd take almost anything else to avoid that sour and furry aftertaste. And it's all streaming straight to your devices, so you'll never have to install, download, or update your games ever. Gameplay without the waiting. They've been trying to use this argument to sell Stadia to us since it launched. Stadia seems to think, I'm really fed up with having to install my video games. They've been telling us for a year now that we've been tormented, waiting for endless downloads and game updates. With Stadia, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's instant gaming. Kinda. Sure, sometimes on consoles, you have to wait for a game file to install, but it's really not the hardship that Stadia makes it out to be. And gameplay being delayed by updates isn't even as big of a problem anymore because, well, most of the mainstream consoles have a standby mode. And you know how that works? When it's on standby, your games update while you're away from the console. It's pretty cool. Also, it's not like Stadia games just don't have updates. Of course they do. Stadia takes care of all the updates in the background, so your game is always up to date. Except that sometimes it's not. Earlier this year, the developers of Football Manager 2020 were having difficulty getting Stadia to update their version of the game with the latest patch. Fans were very upset that they had to wait weeks for a patch that other players and other platforms already had access to. Stadia, you had one job to do. Updates don't just magically get applied to games instantly. Someone has to click the button. And if you're not gonna do it, Stadia, then who will? If you want to build up a collection of great games, Stadia Pro is for you.
What's Stadia Pro? Well, it's a subscription plan where you pay $9.99 per month. They toss you a handful of games every so often instead of offering a better Netflix-like service that grants you an instant library. It's dumb, but dumber is that unless you pay that fee, Stadia streaming quality is purposely lowered. Even though you bought a game at full price, you still need to pay per month to get the game to look good. It's like paying for a ticket to see a movie, and when you sit down in the theater, the image is out of focus. So you complain, and they tell you you're not a pro member. You'll need to pay 10 bucks, and then we'll fix it for you. You're being ripped off, you know that? Those things you already own can deliver Stadia's high-quality gaming experience. Let's take a look at that high-quality gaming experience. A year ago in our worst console launch ever video, we compared Destiny 2 on Stadia Pro to it running on a gaming PC. Putting the two versions of the game side by side, we saw a huge drop in graphic quality in Stadia compared to PC. And in the past year, nothing has changed. And it's not just big demanding titles that have issues. We played Power Rangers Battle for the Grid a game people are probably dismissing altogether because they would assume it would just obviously be running better on Stadia, right? But compared against the Xbox One X release, the graphics and textures are noticeably lower. Look at the rocks in the background here. It's like someone sneezed all over them. You don't even need a fancy One X to see the benefits. Power Rangers on Xbox One S also has way higher quality textures than on Stadia Pro. That core hardware is seven years old. On Stadia, the writing on this umbrella is clear as mud. You can't read it. Look at the same umbrella on Xbox One S. Can you read it now? 10.7 teraflops is more powerful than the top two consoles of the previous generation combined. Even if Stadia magically becomes four times more powerful than the latest consoles like PS5 and Xbox Series X, does it matter? The internet issues we've demonstrated will still not be resolved. Pump all the super duper graphics through a compressed video stream and the delayed inputs and drop in quality will always be noticeable. Stadia has games for everyone and that library is always growing. Here is the main course and the banquet of Stadia's problems. Your game library on their platform is not secure. Your access to your games is dependent on Stadia being successful in keeping their servers up. Why is this a concern, you might ask? Well, when Stadia sells you a game, you pay a one-time fee for the game and then have endless access to all that expensive networking and hardware that Google is running. Physical consoles, on the other hand, have a special superpower. People pay for them. So the cost of the hardware to the console manufacturer is offset a bit. But Stadia carries the cost of all those server blades on their own. It's like if you paid an incredibly small price for an all-you-can-eat buffet. But it never ends. Essentially, using Google's data center with no limit for free. Sounds cool until you realize that someone is going to have to pay. And if they go offline, all of your games go with it. And this is in direct competition against companies like GOG.com, where you can download any game you want DRM-free and keep it on your computer. Even if GOG.com were to go offline tomorrow, you can still play all of your games. A lot of people argue that Google has so much money that it doesn't matter. They'll just keep paying for Stadia no matter what, because they're just cool like that. We're not even seeing Google invest enough into Stadia right now, and it's only a year old. The biggest example to date is the new Chromecast with Google TV. Everyone who is paying attention to Stadia expected that a new Chromecast would support Stadia at launch. But no. Google announced we would have to wait until the first half of 2021 for official Stadia support on their new Chromecast. That is just insane to me. How can you not internally support your own projects? Not to mention that the existing Android TVs that are already out there don't have official support for Stadia and Google has not offered a timeline for when that will happen. Those things you already own can deliver Stadia's high quality gaming experience. If that's true, then get it working on the screen in my kitchen. You heard me, the Google Nest Hubs. It's a Google device, it has a screen, so get it done. Because right now when I ask my Google Nest Hub to run Stadia, it does this. Oh great kazoo, open Stadia. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Okay, can you tell me what a shoe tastes like? 
Sorry, I don't know how to do that. Hide Sugar is the Prime Minister of Xanadu. They have all the resources, but they don't seem to know how to use them. If you need to be reminded of what it looks like when a company throws unlimited money at a platform, but knows what they're doing, Look at Xbox. They made major game studio purchases like Obsidian and Double Fine. They were buying up everyone and giving the developers blank checks to make whatever they wanted for the Xbox ecosystem. Then, in September 2020, they bought ZeniMax Media, the parent company that owns Bethesda, id Software, and several other studios. These purchases are calculated and have definitely had an impact with gamers. They went to the parent company of Bethesda and said, how much for everything? And then they got Elder Scrolls, they got Fallout, they got Doom, and so much more. These are big franchises with brand name appeal. So what has Stadia done? Well, they bought Typhoon Studio. That's it. They bought one studio. And that one game that that one studio has released is available on freaking Xbox Game Pass and not Stadia. How does that make any sense? They've apparently made no other acquisitions to try and jumpstart their struggling exclusive game library. I don't know about you folks, but it doesn't look to me like they're willing to just dump unlimited money into Stadia. The only question now is, how much longer does Stadia have? Simply put, Stadia is a gaming service by Google. And there's a new threat to Stadia survival, competition in video game streaming. Because the cloud gaming marketplace is fuller now than ever before. PlayStation still offers streaming to console or PC with PlayStation Now, a monthly pay service that includes a massive library of games. You have Nvidia's GeForce Now, which allows you to stream the games you already own on Steam straight to your PC or other compatible devices. Amazon announced Luna, which is currently in early access and operates just like Stadia, but with Netflix library like Access. And how could I forget Xbox and their X Cloud gaming service that is bundled into Game Pass Ultimate. Their service does everything from streaming tons of games at a fixed cost per month to allowing you to download them across multiple platforms and devices and play them off local hardware. If I was laying down bets, xCloud would get all of my coin, because right now they have over 10 million Xbox Game Pass subscribers. That's 10 million paying customers that are just one upgrade away from Game Pass Ultimate and xCloud. As best as anyone can tell, the Stadia mobile app, one of only two ways to manage your Stadia experience, has been downloaded around 1 million times. That's 10 times less, and we don't know if that means that all 1 million downloads are paying customers. This isn't proof on its own that Xbox is winning or anything, but it's not a great statistic for Stadia. But don't count out any of Stadia's competitors. They all have huge, obvious advantages over Stadia, whether it be price, features, or most important of all, the games. That's right, Phil, the games. The library that you want to play. <gasps> oh, look, Facebook announced that they're getting into game streaming as well. <laughs> Can you see how it's starting to get just a little crowded in here? Stadia had his chance to be the one out in front defining what modern cloud-based gaming could be. Stadia was full of exciting possibilities. Even though they weren't the first to try a streaming game platform, they were the first to try it with the power of a company like Google behind them. Stadia was dripping with potential, but that potential has been squandered. There will be a winner in the race for cloud gaming dominance, my friends, but all Stadia can hope for now is to not be dead last. What does this question even mean? Stadia!